Following the release of iOS 10.1, Apple has been hard at work with 10.2. That begs the question, what's changed and should you update? So in this video, I wanted to do a full review and show you what's new in this new update, everything that's changed, should you update, how's the speed like, and what have they fixed? Basically, everything you need to know about this update. So currently we're on beta 4, but it should drop momentarily within a couple weeks. So I just wanted to get a head start on that and give a full review of this update. Now I'm going to be talking a little bit about beta 4 and what's changed in this update, but let's get into the bigger features first. Now unlock your phone and you'll find a new app called TV. It completely replaces the previous videos app, and this is where you will basically see all of your TV subscriptions. The new app Apple was touting to be used with the Apple TV 4. Manage everything from in here. Alongside this new app, there is a new widget for it in the widgets page that you can keep track of all your TV shows and movies from over there. Exclusive to the iPhone 7 and 7 Plus, unfortunately, there are three new wallpapers from Apple's event when they did announce the iPhone 7 and 7 Plus. So these crystal looking balls over here, three new wallpapers, sadly, not many more, and I'm happy for something at least, but there's that. And one of the biggest changes in iOS 10.2 is the support of Unicode 9.0. That means a ton of new emojis you're gonna find in this update. But not only that, a lot of the older ones have been reimagined, made sharper, made more realistic. I think that's the best way to put it. So if you actually look at the icons of the animals and the food, I think that's the best example of what they changed. They look a lot more true to life. So before they were more cartoonish and now they look still cartoonish, but have more details in them. And I kind of like it. I do like this update. Not a lot of people do. They prefer to keep their emojis looking more fantasy-like, but it's nice. Nice little update. Not only that, ton of new emojis. So great update to the emojis. In iMessage, you'll find that there are several new effects. So if you guys want to go ahead and send a message to somebody and go ahead and send it with an effect, go to the screen page and slide over and there are two new effects. For one, there is celebration and now you can send with love as well. So you get a little heart right there. Couple nice new effects. I can see a lot more happening with time. So previously on a quick reply, if you went and used the quick reply option over here, you wouldn't be able to see who's messaging you up in the top left, which could get a little annoying if you're typing something along and forget who you're talking to. It happens. So if I go ahead and send a message back, now on iOS 10.2, on this quick reply, you can see who it is. So it'll actually display the contact info or phone number on the top left now. So in messages, if you were to disable show contact photos on an older version of iOS 10, and you would go back into the message thread, the contact photo would still be there. Now with that same option off on 10.2, if I jump into the messages, you'll notice there is no longer a contact photo display, just the name of the person you're talking to. There's a new option in settings that on the lock screen, you can now see the preview for a message if the previews are disabled when your phone is unlocked. So I'm gonna go ahead and unlock it over here. And sorry, my phones are all going off. I'm texting them all at once. Anyways, if I slide over, you'll notice you can now see what the message says. Now, a very welcome change that I do like, let's take the same live photo on both devices here. So I'm gonna go ahead and trigger the movement and let's check out that photo we just took. So if I go ahead and 3D touch on it, Notice how much less choppy the one on the left is. And I'm going to take that volume down, play it again for you. So it has a 60 frame per second animation now versus a choppy 20 to 30 on the right over here. So it's definitely much, much smoother to look at your live photos. Now, Apple did fix a minor annoyance in iOS 10. So whenever you'd be using the camera application and let's say you set the settings in a certain way, you turned off live photos, you enabled grid, or you left it on video and you close it, you go do other things. When you come back to it, it will always default or reset to photos and all of your settings will be removed and disabled so it can get annoying. Now there's a new option to save your photos in settings, not photos, I mean your last presets. So if we go to the very, very bottom, you'll notice preserve settings is right here. So we can choose filter camera mode to stay how we set it before. Now, if only they would fix the fact that we have to go all the way into settings to change our camera settings and we can't do it from in here like any other phone. That's my biggest annoyance, but even nice to see this. Now in accessibility on the home button settings, you can actually choose what holding the home button does now. So you can completely disable Siri via holding it, just have her respond when you say, hey Siri. So if you're tired of having that there when you hold it, you can't completely disable what happens 
when you hold the home button. And a minor change for Siri, if you do have her disabled and you go ahead and try and trigger her, you'll get a new splash screen where you can turn on Siri directly from it. If you didn't like the little bar rating you'd see in Apple Music now, you can go ahead and enable the old star ratings via this setting right here. And Apple made a nice little update to the actual music interface. If we do jump into the now playing and drag down, there are new buttons for shuffle and repeat to go ahead and make them a little bit more distinguishable from the white background because before there were tiny little buttons on the right. So a nice new interface for those two buttons. And any Bluetooth headphones you now connect will have a new icon in the top right to signify that they are Bluetooth headphones to give you a little bit of an idea of what's going on. Previously, it would just be the Bluetooth icon. So nice little way to tell you you've got headphones connected. The SOS feature. So previously in beta two of iOS 10.2, this is what we had. If you click the power button five times, it would activate an emergency SOS feature. So this is a law that's required in India. That's the only place this is still enabled. Apple removed this feature later on in 10.2, but it's very likely it could be reintroduced in the final version of 10.2. So possibly look out for that. And alongside that SOS feature, whenever you do activate it, you can set it so that in the health app, it will send out your current location to emergency contacts whenever it is activated. So on the left is iOS 10.2 and on the right, iOS 10.1.1. If I do set a pure white background, it has a gray filter to it. And if I turn them up all the way, just so you can tell that they're completely even, for some reason, Apple adds a gray filter to photos on older versions of iOS 10 and before. Now, that's no longer the case. It's pure white or pure black, however you set it. And another interesting change on the home screen, the actual blur on 3D Touch pop-ups has changed. So if I activate the very same one, You'll notice that on the left on 10.2, it's a little bit more transparent. So you can see through it and it honestly does interfere a little bit with understanding the text or the actual logo. So I don't know why they would do that, but the 3D touch pop-ups have more transparency now. And lastly, the notification center. So if you start dragging it down very slowly, it behaves kind of differently. It's a little bit more sticky now on 10.2 over here. And if we go ahead and swipe over to the widgets view and we go back into it, it will stay where we left it. Previously, it would revert back to the notifications page. So that's it for overall features. Let's talk about iOS 10.2 beta 4. What's changed? What have they fixed in this specific beta? So if we jump into the storage real quick, just wanna show you guys the capacity went up by 10 megabytes. Found that kind of interesting, although the overall available went down. I haven't noticed really a change in speed, but I'm gonna get into the speed performance in just a little bit. But there's a ton of bugs, guys. The video crash, the iOS bypass, the no animations bug. What still works in this beta? I can tell you one thing, circle folders no longer work. They have been patched in 10.2, so I was not able to get those working. On my iPhone 5S, after updating to this latest version of the beta, can confirm that the no animations bug still works. So you guys can enjoy a device free of any slow animations, which is pretty cool. So how about the video bug? Let's go ahead and jump into my video and get into that link. All right, so let's play this. Okay, so fingers crossed that it's fixed, but I would actually be very, very surprised if it wasn't fixed. It's unlike Apple to leave this in here for so long just to be safe let's watch it again oh oh no it's not fixed my phone just completely froze yeah so video crash bug still works in this latest beta all right so this is the one i've been dying to see does the lock screen bypass still work so i do have the passcode set let's initiate a facetime call custom i'm going to cancel this over here and now let's see if the magic works. Okay, so it took me a little while. I'm not sure if anything has changed or if I just got rusty at doing it, but I was able to get this menu to pop up. So if I am correct, it should be working now. India. And I'm gonna go ahead and censor that out. That's my data. Okay, so create new contact. Please do work. Choose photo and boom, I am in. And just like that, I'm still at the lock screen. So I was locked this entire time. So I'm actually quite impressed. This does still work. And for some reason, I'm getting an option to downgrade to 10.2 beta 3, no idea. Some people are having that, but this is the latest build number. So bypass still works. That blew my mind. Video crash still works. 
Apple isn't focusing on fixing these for some reason. Hmm. And perhaps the most disappointing of all is the fact that the shutter bug I brought to attention is still here. The rough transition from light to dark, no smooth flow is still present in this latest beta. So that was the most disappointing to me. And quite a significant bump in the multi-core score Geekbench in 10.2 beta 4 on the left. So I'm liking that. Can't say I feel it reflected in the system. Animations still aren't that great. If I actually jump into settings and I go into the multitasking page, again, it still goes home sometimes, but it has this weird stutter when you jump into it. So I'm not liking that. Overall though, would I recommend updating to 10.2? I have to say for the convenience with the camera saving your last settings, the new emojis, the smoother live photos, and the updates to iMessage and the way it works with your iPhone. It doesn't slow your phone down, adds a lot of necessary features, almost as much as 10.1. I'd say yes, you have my approval. If you guys are holding out for a jailbreak, that's a different story whether or not you should, but it is a great update packed with features. And hopefully with this video, I could show you some of those features if you didn't know them already. Overall, I'll give you a nice rounded review of 10.2. Anyways, guys, enjoy this update. Have a great day. Peace.